You're watching the news on Bahrain International. I'm Hamid Shaban. Good evening. Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King, President of the Supreme Council for Women, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, gave a talk at a UN event on women empowerment in cooperation with the Kingdom through the SCW and the launch of the second edition of Her Royal Highness's Award for Women Empowerment, along with the program to establish the generation of equality. <laughs> لإلقاء الضوء مرة أخرى على رسالة وأهداف الجائزة التي نجد فيها خلاصة فكرية ومعرفية لخبرتنا الوطنية في مجال تمكين المرأة ومتابعة تقدمها في مملكة البحرين الأمر الذي أسهم في وضع هذه المبادرة تحت تصرف المجتمع الدولي من خلال هيئة الأمم المتحدة للمرأة التي تحرص بدورها على إتاحة الفرصة لتبادل الخبرات ونقل المعارف وتوجيه الموارد لدعم الجهود والمساهمات الوطنية التي ترتقي بحياة المرأة وتمكنها من الإسهام بشكل مؤثر في تنمية ونهضة مجتمعها وبما يحقق الأهداف العالمية للتنمية المستدامة 2030 The Secretary General of the Supreme Council for Women, Halil Ansari, participated via video conference in the Generation Equality Forum, which is organized at the initiative of the United Nations Women and is co-chaired by France and Mexico. On behalf of the Kingdom of Bahrain, it is a pleasure to welcome you all to the launch of the second round of Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa's Global Award for Women Empowerment, which coincides with UN Women's important conference discussing the way forward to bridge generation gaps during these difficult times. I'm also pleased to extend our thanks and gratitude to you and women for affiliating with the Supreme Council for Women on all fronts of shared interest and for their adoption renewal of this initiative for the second round. Such a commitment to the award not only confirms the support to global efforts towards enhancing the status of women, but also contributes directly to achieving the sustainable development goals, specifically gender balance and equal opportunities. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Works and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasr bin Hamad Al Khalifa, affirmed that the great achievement of the Bahrain Victorious Cycling Team by cyclist Matej Moharic by winning the seventh stage of the Tour de France confirms the successful march of the team in the major championships. His Highness Sheikh Nasr made it clear that the Bahrain Victorious Cycling Team has become a role model in making achievements for our dear kingdom in external forums and constantly striving to contribute to the promotion of the kingdom in achieving the Economic Vision 2030. His Highness said that the victory of the cyclists in the seventh stage of the Tour de France is a great achievement in light of the front races competition and the wide participation from various countries of the world. Sheikh Nasser expressed pleasure with this new achievement that has been made and asserted to continue supporting the team to accomplish further achievements. He added this victory was the great efforts put forth by the technical and administrative bodies in addition to the riders. Cyclist Matej was able to win the seventh stage of the Tour de France amid great participation from various world countries, adding a new achievement to the series of achievements the team has made in the last period. The Speaker of the Council of Representatives, Fawzia bint Abdullah Zainal, paid tribute to the wife of His Majesty the King and Supreme Council for Women, President Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, hailing her support to women empowerment through plans, strategies, and initiatives. She praised Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika's efforts, which contributed to bolstering the standing of Bahraini women and bolstering their role in building the nation and contributing to its development, led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. The Speaker extended congratulations to Her Royal Highness, marking the launch of the second edition of the Princess Sabika bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa Global Award for Women Empowerment. In a statement today, Zainal lauded this global initiative, which was launched in partnership with the UN Women, which reflects Bahrain's keenness on strengthening international cooperation. She praised the SEW-led efforts, adding the award criteria shows a firm partnership between the public and private sectors to promote policies based on gender equality in all sectors and integrate women's needs in development. She said that the global award builds on the success of the National Prize, which was launched by Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika to promote Bahraini women's empowerment, which increased the rate of women participation across all fields. 
Shura Council Chairman Ali bin Saleh has Saleh hailed Bahraini women's strides and active role in the development march led by His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa. He stressed the importance of the Princess Sabika bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa Global Award, which builds on the success of the National Prize launched by Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa, wife of His Majesty the King and Supreme Council for Women President. The Shura Council Chairman hailed Bahrain's landmark development strides and the prosperous era of His Majesty the King, commending the role of the government chaired by the Crown Prince and Prime Minister His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa. Hailing its programs aim to promote women's status and enhance their participation and accession to leading positions in all fields. Asalah praised the international response to the second edition of the Princess Sabika bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa Global Award for Women Empowerment, which he said reflects Bahrain's standing. He reiterated the Shura Council's support to initiatives and legislation aimed to promote women's standing and pivotal role as an essential cornerstone of national development led by His Majesty the King. The Minister of Labor and Social Development and Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Labor Market Regulatory Authority, Jamil bin Mohammed Ali Hamedan, praised Bahrain's continued Tier 1 status in the U.S. Department of State's 2021 Trafficking in Persons Report. The Kingdom has been included as a Tier 1 country in the Department of State's Trafficking in Persons Report for four consecutive years. The Minister noted that under the leadership of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, Bahrain continues to strive to prevent and eradicate human trafficking, elevating its standing among developed nations and expanding its list of accomplishments. He attributed Bahrain's success to His Royal Highness's directives to foster an inclusive environment that addresses trafficking in persons, creating a regulatory environment that promotes development while safeguarding human rights. The Minister of Labor reaffirmed that Bahrain's achievements reflect the Kingdom's belief that safeguarding workers' rights and promoting increased cooperation and social dialogue serve as the foundations for sustainable development. The Minister praised the cooperation of all government agencies in highlighting the Kingdom's global and international reputation and position, praising the role of all partners involved in human trafficking file. He affirmed Bahrain's commitment to work on continuing the achievements of the kingdom in terms of promoting human rights and the labor level, which comes at the forefront of its priorities, securing workers' rights and providing a sound working environment. The Undersecretary for Municipal Affairs in the Ministry of Forks, Municipalities, Affairs and Urban Planning, Engineer Sheikh Mohammed bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, revealed the approved projects for the fiscal years 2021-2022, noting that there are 18 vital projects in various regions of the capital. This came during a video meeting held with the Capital Municipality Council, where the Municipal Undersecretary confirmed that the 18 projects implemented by the Ministry in the Capital Governorate Manama, which are vital projects that include a number of walkways, parks, playgrounds, commercial complexes, and the development of waterfronts, market and other projects, noting that some projects will be implemented in cooperation with the private sector. The Undersecretary also reviewed a number of important projects under study, noting that some of these projects are being implemented in partnership with the private sector. For his part, the Undersecretary of the Ministry of Works, Municipalities Affairs and Urban Planning for Work Affairs, Engineer Ahmed Abdelaziz Al Khayyab, stressed the role played by the municipal councils and the capital municipality in the process of construction and development, stressing the ministry's keenness to enhance coordination and continuous communication with the councils, which contributes to ensuring the progress of projects and services according to plans. Civil Services Bureau Chairman Ahmed bin Zayed 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 issued Directive 7 of 2021 instructing the government entities to allow 50% of their staff to work remotely from home as per July the 2nd. The move is in line with the mandatory precautionary measures announced by the National Task Force for Combating COVID-19 with the approval of the Executive Committee to activate the yellow level. Zayed said that the government bodies can, whenever necessary, conduct rapid antigen tests for their employees and other staff under contract at the workplace. The National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus held a press conference in which the Undersecretary at the Ministry of Health and members of the task force, Dr. Walid al mana highlighted the newly adopted four-level COVID-19 alert level traffic light system. He also noted that Bahrain will move to the yellow level on 2nd of July and indicated that moving from a higher alert level to a lower one would require staying at the same level for a period of no less than a week. But moving up from a lower alert level to a higher one can be immediate. Speaking on treatment, infectious disease consultant and microbiologist and member of the task force, Lieutenant Colonel Manaf al Gahtani noted that Bahrain had added Stromovimab VIR 7831 following emergency use approval by comprehensive clinical trials. The drug will be used to treat infected adults over the age of 12, weighing at least 40 kilograms, who are at risk of their condition deteriorating and resulting in hospitalization. The consultant of infectious diseases and internal diseases, Dr. Jamila Salman, concluded by reiterating the pivotal role of vaccinations and emphasized the importance of booster shots.
The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 1,059,186 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 991,125 had taken the second. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccine. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 2,882 with 453 recoveries, 148 registered new cases and one new death. 81 of the new registered cases were expatriates, 57 were contacts of active cases and 10 were travel related. The ministry expressed its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urged everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus.